Greetings, travelers, and welcome back. This is episode 34 of Westeros Craft Walks with your always loyal host, Dutch Guard. Today, we're going to be checking out Old Oak, the seat of House Oakheart of the Reach. I thought this would be a great place to start up where we left off. It's been quite a while, and I'll tell you what happened, guys. My old computer, she just gave up and died on me. Five years running, she just stopped working, Seven Blesser. Um, so we're back here. I just managed to get a new computer two days ago. Um, got it all up and running now, all set up to go. Uh, the best settings I can find, and um, it works like a dream. This computer has got a massive screen, so I really feel like I'm in Westeros, which is sort of the idea. And it's completely silent, which I'm quite unused to. It's a bit unsettling, actually, so you'll hear my voice even better than ever before. Um, but without further ado, let's explore this build. I'm sure you're all craving um, your Westeros Craft Walks fix, so let's get started. So we're here in the town of Branch, which is just outside of Old Oak and sort of the main town of the castle. Um, we've got a big lovely sept in the distance there, this beautiful market area, which I think is quite nice, all the different colors, sort of the very festive reach-like atmosphere. Um, we've got some middle-class houses here. Uh, you can see this red lantern, clearly a brothel of some kind. Um, and of course, all of the ha these houses are beautifully furnished. And we've got, even got some in-construction houses here, which I think are quite cool because, of course, not every house can be completed all at once. Um, so we do have some houses in construction. We've got some waddle being mounted up here, ready for its uh, daub to be added. We've got some foundations being built. And I believe in this house, I'm just waiting for the other half of the roof to be built. And you can see some of that slate being hoisted up to the roof. Um, so I do really love uh, that part of the town, you know, having sort of the gritty in-progress work. Um, not everything looks pristine and 100% completed. And we also have what looks like a cobbler up here because of the shoes on that sign there. Let's take a look inside. Um, hopefully we find like a little workbench area. Um, got some trade going in here. on here. You can see the coins on this table. Um, you can see a big bunch of leather on this table here, um, clearly for the cobbler. And probably lives here as well. So here's a nice little dining area and kitchen. Um, upstairs probably leads to the bedrooms. So quite cool. All of these little houses have their, each have their professions and their purposes. Um, oh cool, we've got this little caravan here, another little wagon stall here for selling all kinds of things, perhaps potions again. Do love potion wagons, potion salesmen. Um, so we do have this sept here in the town of Branch. Of course, in the reach they are, they tend to be quite pious and there tend to be septs and statues of the seven all over the place. So let's take a look inside here real quick. Um, very cool. I like the sort of copper insides of the roof there. You can see two bells and sort of this crystal hanging from the ceiling. And this is probably my most preferred um, way of building the Statues of the Seven, um, is just sort of using these thick fence blocks. I just think it looks really cool. And you can sort of imagine that they look like little figures. Um, so heading back out, we're going to walk a little bit further through the town. Love the little trees here. And we've got sort of a big inn here on our left. And just up ahead down the road there, you can see the wealthy class house. Um, there's only one in this town, probably for a wealthy merchant or uh, perhaps a, a knight. And um, it's got this beautiful stone wall around it, um, as well as made mostly of stone, uh, because stone is sort of a more precious and valuable and hard to transport commodity, so it makes sense that the wealthy houses would make use of that. Um, so here's that inn here, which I think is quite cool. It's got sort of this cool tower sticking up um, out of the building. Um, here are some of the lower class houses you can see because they're made uh, of the thatch roofs and sort of mostly wood and daub and wattle and there's not too much stone going on here. So it's sort of cheaper materials but um, still a sturdy and homely house nonetheless. And we've also got all this kind of lovely nature around us. Now because we are um, at Old Oak, we've probably got loads and loads of oaks. I do love this sort of oak lined street here which is quite cool. Um, and before we head to the castle which you can see just over there, it's a magnificent beauty of a thing. Um, we're going to head over to the tourney grounds. And um, we've got a big old oak here and these statue of these three knights here. And we'll get a little bit more into them later on. They're called the Three Leaves and the sort of legends of the oak hearts. Um, so here in the tourney grounds we've got all the different tents of all the different knights. You see the different colors there. Um, House Oakheart, uh, the colors of their sigil are, I think it's green leaves on a yellow background. The same um, colors actually as the Tyrells of Marjorie uh, and uh, Loras Tyrell, you all know and love. And we've got some different colors here as well. Um, none that I can particularly name. Uh, this looks like it could potentially be the Aaron's. Um, probably got some Baratheon colors around here as well. Um, but the main feature of the tourney grounds, we've got the melee arena over here, which I think is quite cool. Sort of a coliseum stadium kind of seating. We see some smeared blood on the ground and helmets uh, tossed about. 
Um, and each in, in each of these tents, you can sort of see some sleeping beds and uh, chests for storing their knight's armor. That's probably where the squires sleep. And um, just over here on the right, through these market stalls, which I think are strategically placed, <laughs> we've got the jousting arena, which I think is quite cool. Um, so you've got the Lord's Dais, or the seat up there, um, under the oak heart colors, and uh, these two lanes here for the knights to joust. Um, uh, at each other, which must be make for quite an, uh, an exciting sight. Um, now the uh, the Reachmen do love a good fest and a good party, so that's why we've sort of decided to build these tourney grounds here. I think they make a nice, cool addition to the surrounding lands of the Oakharts. Um, we're just going to cheat here and take a little shortcut to get to the Castle of Old Oak, which is definitely one of my favorite castles. And I mean, look at it. It's just huge. It's definitely one of the biggest castles we've got in the Reach right now. And I think it just um, exemplifies the sort of Reach style that we, we've gone for. You can see some sandstone mixed in the wall there, but it's mostly sort of this pink Reach texture stone that we've created specifically for the Reach. And you can see the green slate roof sort of... Um, emblematic of sort of the green fertility of the reach which I think is quite cool so we're just going through this barbican here which is sort of this main gate part and this drawbridge you can sort of see in the sides of the walls here those are um, old oaks sort of painted or um, carved into the sides of the walls and uh, now just heading through the main gate into the first yard, the outer yard. And here is the old oak from which old oak gets its name. I think it's quite cool that we decided to include that. Now, of course, this isn't mentioned in the books or anything, but it's something that the builder decided to include, and I'm pretty glad he did. In fact, we didn't really have anything to go off in terms of the books. We just had some legends of the oak hearts, like the three leaves, like I mentioned before, some of their ancestry, but really nothing about how their castle looks or anything like that. Um, so let's uh, see if we can make our way through the castle here. I've got some cool things to show off to you and some cool lore to tell you about, like uh, the ancestry I was talking to you about before. Um, so firstly, we've got uh, the Great Hall here, which I think is quite cool. Sort of the timber supports look a bit like trees, sort of got some roots growing out the bottom there. And uh, the Lord's Seat all the way up on the Lord's Dais there, which I think is quite magnificent. It's got like a sort of little canopy, which I think is cool, sort of like a... Um, a bit like a medieval renaissance-ish kind of throne. We've got some beautiful paintings hanging up here above the uh, fireplaces, the hearths, um, which open up into the outside hall. Now, I thought this was quite interesting. Uh, here we've got a flag of House Martell. Now, the Reachmen, and particularly uh, the Oakharts, um, despise the Dornish and have constantly fought battles with them and skirmishes. In fact, the Three Leaves, um, the legend of the Three Leaves, as I mentioned before, um, they were known for killing Dornishmen, and this is sort of, it looks like a beat up um, old Martell flag that they stole from them, perhaps in a, in a big battle or uh, something of the sort. Um, but just quite cool little details like that. Um, this looks like the main audience chamber of uh, the uh, Lord Oakheart, which I think is quite cool as well. I just wanted to show that off to you. And in this hallway over here, we've got the history of House Oakheart. Um, in murals, which I think is quite cool. We had something like this in Castle Rock as well. There you can see um, Castle Old Oak. Um, here we've got um, perhaps someone in Dorne fighting the Dornish. Um, over here, again, the same thing. Um, here we've got one of the three leaves <laughs> standing atop his pile of Dornish skulls. Um, and over here we've got um, perhaps making friends with the Tyrells here. You can see the Tyrell sigil there. And uh, those would be the three leaves, those three helmets. And those were all members of House Oakheart who fought very valiantly and um, earned uh, House Oakheart a lot of credibility. Um, so they're pretty famous for that. Um, and of course, House Oakheart, is, they're all descended from Garth Greenhand. And now quite a few houses in the Reach are descended from Garth Greenhand because he was known for spreading his seed far and wide, if you know what I mean. Um, so many houses trace his ancestry back to Garth. He was the first king of the Reach um, and one of the first men who came over to uh, Westeros from Essos. Um, so, uh, yeah, he's a pretty notable figure and uh, pretty famous, so the Oakharts are pretty proud of that ancestry. Um, anyway, before I go down there, uh, we've got this lovely little sept, sort of a private sept, inside the castle of Old Oak, and I think it's really cool. It's sort of got this big screen ahead of us here, um, as you might see in more gothic um, churches. And uh, you've like, sort of got the portraits of all the seven here, and sort of their, their um, I guess their icon or their, uh, their totem um, for each of the seven. So we've got an anvil up here for the smith and a uh, helmet up there for the warrior, etc, etc. But behind the portrait of the stranger, if I just hit this not-so-secret uh, hidden button here, um, we will get into the crypts of Old Oak. 
and it's something that uh, I just think is quite cool that it's behind a portrait of the stranger. And um, these crypts are the private family crypts of House Old Oak, or House Oakheart. And um, I think they've been done really well, so it's something I really wanted to show off to you guys. So we've got the main chamber here, and um, we've got some, some light um, from this little candle here, but the rest is pretty much dark. So we've got these different tombs and tombstones here, and um, I just really love some of the styles of, of, of the different tombs. You've got some of those plain, boring, flat ones, but you've also got this cool, like, canopy kind of thing that I've seen in a couple of cathedrals here in England. Um, Oh yeah, I am in England, by the way, guys. Uh, it doesn't sound like it, but I do live in England. Um, but uh, just love to see sort of some of the parallels in terms of the history, and because uh, um, I think that's something that George R. R. Martin references a lot when he's writing his books. Is he, he he references real history, so we do take a lot of examples from the real world uh, where the details from the books um, can't fill us in all the way. Um, so here we've got another yard of the castle here, which I think is quite cool. We've got sort of a well or a pond here. Um, you can just see the absolute scale of the castle here. It's just massive. It's sort of this main tower here, which I think is quite cool. Um, and we're just going to head through. We've got some stables over here. We're going to head around. Um, I think we're going to end up back in the first yard we started out in. Yep, this is here with the old oak. And we're going to head around to the uh, God's Wood. Um, now, of course, we are in the Reach, so there are no more old gods in the Reach. But um, they do still have a godswood, a sort of little private garden. I do love this area of the castle. It's sort of the, an inner yard. You can see sort of a gallery up at the top there, at the top of the wall. And there's just balconies everywhere, just for the scenic views. There's beautiful flowers everywhere as well. Um, really love the sort of detail going on there. Made it very reach-like. And that's what I was saying when I... When this is what I imagine when I imagine a reach castle. Um, so here we've got that little godswood and a nice little pond with some lily pads growing in them. Nice little seating area for... Um, Quite, uh, quite reflection, perhaps. Um, right, okay, where am I going now? Hmm, I guess you can guess where I'm trying to go to. I did have to explore this castle before I started. In fact, this is the fifth time I've tried to make this video, guys. Um, so I have been trying to make the videos on my old beat-up computer. Um, it just never worked out. Um, all right, so that's where we are. We need to keep going up these stairs. Um, so yeah, I did have to explore this castle a bit, or I just had the opportunity to, and, um, and it is huge. I just saw so many things. There's so many more things that I'd like to show you, but you're just going to have to check them out yourself. So when you get in game, just slash warp old oak and it'll take you there. Um, right, so we've got this little solar in here for writing. A um, nice little hearth. I do love this sort of style of hearth. Um, using these stair blocks is quite cool. Um, and then through here we'll have um, a nice little gallery or corridor with the colors of House Oakheart. I'm getting sidetracked here. I need to go further up the stairs. Um, I do love the rafters in this room as well. Now, I always find that rafters are the true um, sign of, um, of a skilled builder. When people pay attention to the ceilings, that is. Um, let's see what else we got through here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm. I think, uh, okay. Oh, guys, I think I found it. This is the rookery. <laughs> We've got the cages for the ravens here. We've got some blood stains for cutting up the meat to feed those ravens. This looks like sort of the release point. I'm um, quite cool. I just love there's so many balconies here um, for those scenic overviews over the, the lands of the reach. And I think if we... Where, hmm, I think if we go upstairs, we're, it's like sort of a miniature bell tower up here, which is quite cool. Yep. Yeah. Um... And now I just want to get out onto the roof and show you guys uh, a nice scenic overview before I end this video. Um, oh my god, come on. Get <laughs> get on the damn roof. There we go. Okay, wow, cool. I just love the style of these roofs as well, these high peaks. Um, again, very sort of medieval renaissance looking. Um, and a bit fantasy, but I think, you know, we, are, we do live in a fantasy world, so um, it is appropriate. So uh, I'm just going to hop over here and show you. Those are the tourney grounds down there, which just looks so colorful and beautiful. You can see the melee arena as well. And you can see all these roads just stretching out into the distance, out into the farmland and the pastures. Um, and there's the town of Branch in the distance there. Um, so guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for being so patient. I'm sorry if I caused you any worry, but I will be getting these videos out to you more regularly as I love doing them and I love showing off our work on Westeros Craft. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time for episode 35.